Bude to aj niečo praktické, že to je veľmi dobré. Bude to aj niečo praktické, že to je veľmi Sit on the side over here in case I decide to leave. Okay. That's your idea? Yeah, I was coming for the laptop. And I had a bag somewhere too. I had a bag somewhere. Ah, there's my bag. Yeah, yeah. Both in that side. Two or three.
Okay. Uh, guys, thank you for coming. Uh, please, if you have any feedback, uh, feel free to give any feedback through the schedule app. And yeah, how do you see So hi, my name is Tomáš Kráv. I work for Red Hat as part of Container Tool team at OSAS. So today I would like to show you uh, how Nueku and Atomic work, Atomic App works. Uh, I will demonstrate on examples and I will also explain a little bit deeper uh, how Atomic App works. So how many of you have been on Vashik Power Install? Can you raise the hand? Okay, a few. And how many of you have been in this room on Pregnus workshop? So okay, a couple of you. So at first, uh, so what I'm going to do here, so at first I will explain what Google and Atomic App is, how they work, then I will ex explain a little bit more what Nuleku is and what problem uh, is Nuleku trying to solve. And, and then I will show you a demo. Uh, demo will be mostly about Atomic App and how it works, uh, what can you do with it, some tricks, tricks about it. And with this, I will also explain uh, Nuleku, how Nuleku files, files works, what artifacts are, and so on. So, what is Nuleku? So Nuleku is a specification created specially for describing multi-container uh, application. So, and because it's on a specification, it doesn't care what uh, container engine you use or what or orchestration tools you use. It doesn't matter, it's just specification. So, uh, Nuleku is only defined uh, how application looks what are its components, what are parameters, and its dependencies. <coughs> and because every implementation, um, every specification needs its own implementation, we have Atomic App, and Atomic App is implementation of Molecule Spec. Uh, it's currently is implemented around Docker containers. And, yeah, and usually it's embedded inside the container. So you have um, Nuleku metadata inside a container together with Atomic App. So you have, uh, it's a little bit like self-extracting archive. All you need is this only one container and you have metadata and interpreter of this atomic met metadata, in this case, Atomic App. So like, overall, overall goal for Atomic App is to be generic installer for multi-container applications. And also, oh, yeah, uh, Atomic App currently supports multiple providers. It's Kubernetes, <coughs> OpenShift, Marathon, and Docker. So you can use Atomic App to deploy containers on those four systems. So all, all is based on Docker. So just summarize that, we have Nulekul, it's specification that describes application. And then we have Atomic App, and uh, Atomic App knows how to deploy containers based on local specification. Uh, before we, yeah, uh, here I would like to mention also another tool, it's called Atomic, uh, Atomic Command. And Atomic Command is a high level tool for managing containers. There already have been a couple of talks today about Atomic. Uh, on all uh, in my demos, all of them are using Atomic Command to run Atomic App. It may be a little bit confusing, but I uh, will describe, describe how this works uh, on my first demo. And before we move to the demonstration, I would like to talk a bit uh, more about Molecule. Uh, for those of, of you who seen Vashek talks or have been here in this room before, Maybe you already know what this means, but I will recap. So, um, what is overall goal for Nuleku? Nuleku is trying to solve a few common problems that most people that are using containers in big scales <coughs> uh, usually facing. It's a usability, managing dependencies between containers, portability, 
and by this I mean possibility between multiple orchestration tools, uh, parameterization of containers, and distribution. Uh, distribution is not really part of molecular specification, it's more a uh, thing of implementation, but I will talk more about it later. So what I mean by reusability. So uh, if you are already using Docker, you may, uh, you may already have this problem. So let's say, for example, I have some web application, and for this web application, I need also a database. And I want to let test it and start it really quickly. So first thing I will probably do is go to Docker Hub, search for a container of this database, let's say MariaDB. I will look all the containers, and I will choose official one probably, if there is one. Right now there is like three, four, six hundred MariaDB containers, so kind of messy. So I will choose one of them. Uh, then I need probably uh, somehow to configure my database to set an option, create users, and so on. And right now, what it's usually done is that I go to this long readme on Docker Hub page. I will go through it, edit it, find out what environment variables I need to set, what volumes I need to configure, and so on. And this is not really good, it's not user friendly. And maybe there, you, maybe someone handed me Docker image, and I don't have any readme, so I will go to Docker file, I will have to study it, to know what to set, and then I will probably give up and build my own image, because in, this, in that point, it's much easier, easier than to study how someone else built it. So this is basically how, how we ended up with all these same images on Docker Hub. And in the tool this can uh, partly solves for you, uh, because when you give someone uh, uh, application <coughs> package as a pool, all this information are inside this local metadata, and they are in standardized form, in standardized interface that is described <coughs> in the specification. So another problem is that if you have multi-container application, like set, let's set this simple web page with database, I need to somehow define what is the relationship between those containers. <coughs> and there are already tools that are trying to solve this, like Docker Compose, <coughs> but there is one two problem with it, that is that, for example, Docker Compose is strictly attached to Docker ecosystem, so you can only use it to run on the blind Docker. And uh, Atomic App and Molecule uh, are trying to solve this problem like, in a generic way. So you have only one description of relationship, and they are applied to if you run it on Docker, if you run it on Kubernetes, OpenShift, or Marathon. And port portability is another problem. If you have, again, these two containers, my application and database, uh, I maybe I have uh, like more, more environments where I can, where I want to deploy. Let's say I have my laptop, where I'm just playing Docker, and I have production, <coughs> where, is, where I run Kubernetes. And I want to be able to ha have both description how to run my, uh, my application on one place, because it makes it easier to manage. And uh, one thing how to do this is you can also just again describe it in some documentation. I need to run this Docker command and I need to create this JSON file and so on. It's kind of messy. And again, with Molecule, you have you can describe all this in JSON file and um, artifact and you have all together, all these all, all these things. So uh, parameterization. Uh, by this mean I mean mean I want to uh, somehow pass arguments to to my application. Like uh, there are environment variables usually but if you want to run it on the Kubernetes again or some other orchestrator, it's, you have to, again, manage all the JSON files. You have to keep separate, separate version of those files with separate variables. 
or you have to edit them. And Schmidt Molecule, you have these parameters that can be replaced inside artifact. Um, again, this will be maybe more clear <coughs> during the demo. And distribution. Um, so I uh, there's a problem how to dist it's nice that I have this molecule specification, but I, and then I need to somehow be able to distribute it to my user. Let's say I create this app, I want to hand it somewhere else. Um, so Atomic App solved this by putting it uh, to the container with automatic Atomic App itself. So you have this one container, you have Atomic <coughs> App inside, and molecule method inside. So you have all you need to start this application in one container. Uh, this has several benefits. One is that you can use uh, standard um, standard systems for managing uh, images. So like if you have private Docker registry, you can use this for keeping your uh, local application. You don't have to have some separate repository for this. And also, by doing this, it's easier to distribute your application. So, for example, uh, you don't need any readme or documentation. Uh, if you hand it someone this mm -hmm. local application, he basically has all <coughs> he needs to run this because it describes inside describe inside this image as to local metadata. As a technical, how Atomic wor app work works is that you will need more containers because you have Atomic App container with your molecular metadata and when you run this, it starts another containers on the, on the defined provider. I hope this is somehow clear. Again, <coughs> maybe it will be a little more clear uh, with demos. So, yeah, one thing, if you have, during my somehow presentation, any question, like, please ask, interrupt me, and so I will move to demo. Uh, all I will be doing here, you can find on my Docker Hub. So I already started uh, three uh, virtual machines on my laptop. One is running Kubernetes, one is running OpenShift, and one is running Marathon on Mesos. And I will using uh, those systems to deploy containers. So I, I prepared, uh, I will first I will show like a simple web page application. It's, it's just Nginx with Hello World page. And I will show you how real multi-container application looks like, where is nested molecule, what we called. It's the molecule application that reuses another molecule applications. So to run a local application with Atomic App, it's very really easy. As I said, we are using Atomic Command. So do Atomic Run, ask Nginx, Atomic App. And I will give it pro a parameter provider, I said Docker. So this I am telling that I want to run Nginx Atomic App on provider using provider Docker, and you can see there is only one container running right now. It's my local Docker registry, so I can use this to run. Yeah. Now, I see, now you can see a lot of debug infos. And uh, let's check if it works. Uh, here you can see that engine X container started and it's still something on port 8080. So let's go uh, on port 80. Can you show us the, the file that come back up engine X? Yep, I will show it. So, for but before, I want to show how Atomic. Atomic CLI is used for this. So, as I said before, Atomic App is inside the container. 
and because you need to mount some volumes and pass a lot of parameters to it, we are using atomic command. And atomic command has this nice feature that if you create image that has run label, and then you do atomic run and name of the image, it reads the run label and uses it uh, and figure out command that needs to run. So this is Docker file that was used to build atomic app. And here you can see that there is run label with all these horrible Docker run command and all parameters. So technically, you don't have to use atomic commands to run atomic app. You can use just Docker run and atomic app, but then you have to pass all these parameters. So atomic app makes that just easier to run. Atomic makes easier to run atomic app. For each application which you want to create an atomic app. Sir? For, for each application which you want to use with this, you need to create a corresponding atomic app for that. Yep. Uh, so how this works is that first atomic app will is going to extract all the local metadata from image. And he was trying to pull the uh, image. It was already on my machine. And here it is extracting to var host var lib. Host inside container. Host is uh, like my, my host. <laughs> and after it extracts all the new local metadata, it reads it and based on those metadata, it starts com uh, container. And because I use Docker provider, it used just plain Docker to start container. Uh, I will go to this directory. And I hope you can see it. So uh, those, those are all uh, metadata that got extracted from uh, new uh, atomic app image. The main file is new like cool that basically describes how this uh, app looks like and what are its components. We have some generic metadata, uh, what's name and version. But what is more interesting is this graph graph object uh, in the graph. They are, it basically describes all the components that are used to run this composed container composed application. So be this, because this is only a simple example, there is only one item. It's not good nginx. It's not good because it's running as user. It's no good. Uh, there are parameters. Uh, this item in graph has two parameters. It's image and host port. I mean, this image is Docker image that is started as has this non good engine application, and then host port that used for mapping ports. And there is another interesting file, it's artifacts, and artifacts basically describes <coughs> how to run this application on each provider. So here we describe how to run it on the Docker, OpenShift, Kubernetes, and Marathon. If I look at artifact for Docker, that was used for this. So it's just plain simple. Oh, it's not cut off, but okay. Just plain simple Docker run command. That, and inside the artifacts, you can use parameters. So this image gets replaced uh, uh, with default value. So it will be this, com this image and host port. It's replaced for host port. Same thing is for Kubernetes. Uh, here's application controller for, for this application. And again, here is image is used here. And if I look at the service for Kubernetes, there is host port. And we basically those are files that <coughs> describes my application. Uh, I didn't have to specify, specify any parameters because all the parameters has have uh, default values, so default values values were used. Uh, after each Docker, uh, uh, after each atomic app run, uh, atom answers con dot get gen get granted, and those are values that have been used to start this application, and this is spe especially useful 
because you can also stop applications using Atomic App. So now, now I can do. All right, again. Atomic run my image. And I will change mode to stop. So I, I'm telling that it wants to stop this application and I will pass it to current directory, so dot. Right now, Atomic App is not going to extract any metadata from image. It's not going to, uh, it basically reads uh, metadata from current directory uh, and stop my container based on those those values from Atomic uh, from answers conf again, so now you can see it stopped. Right now, Atomic App uh, don't delete, don't delete images, uh, containers. So I have to do the RM. So this is nice, but uh, there is also something that's called interactive mode. So if I have um, application. <coughs> And inside the Nuleku specification, um, there are parameters which don't have which don't have default values. Atomic will ask Atomic App will ask me to provide him these values. So I have uh, here a slightly different version of same image. And if I run it, it's trying to pull. Okay, uh, I'll do, yeah. Yeah, uh, right now there is uh, Atomic App uses um, Kubernetes as, as default provider. So if I want to use different provider, I have to pass provider parameter. Uh, there is some work that in future versions uh, it can be possible to specify default provider inside Nuleku metadata. So it was, uh, it will be on the creator of Nuleku to decide what is default provider. And, uh, and we can see that because there is inside this application Nuleku file, there is no default value for host port. So Atomic App stopped, and and is asking me to provide. Uh, Host port parameter for this. So let's say 8088. And now if I go to this 8088, there is my web page for the Hello World engines. Uh, and then I will here answer con again. Yeah, it got instructed to defer uh, every run of, of the Atomic app. Uh, extracts metadata to different locations. So you don't lose anything. So you <coughs> here you can see it's atomic uh, answer as gonna with my eight eighty eight <coughs> and I can even use the stop to stop it. So, uh, this is nice but this is not anything you couldn't do with let's say Docker Compose. What is nice here is that you can do the same thing, same steps, uh, with same application on, let's say, Kubernetes. So I will clean out. use same image as I used on for first thing and I will do provider equals Kubernetes and provider config equals home slash cube config vagrant uh, config so now I'm turning atomic up to use Kubernetes to run uh, my atomic app. And in this background config, I have just uh, information how to connect to my Kubernetes that is running inside a uh, box. 
Hold on, let me try to stop it. <coughs> yep, let's see what's started. Uh, if I check Kubernetes that is running here, you can see there is one port currently pending. There is also a replication controller for this port. And I should have service also. It's still pending, so. Can you please repeat that from the command again? I missed that. The, co the command which you used to. Yep. The time this command to go up. Okay, here. Well, it's, it's a config file, so you can uh, so just uh, other than Vagrant can we use any cloud provider also? Sorry. Other than Vagrant, can we use any cloud yeah, provider? Yeah, anything that uh, basically implements Kubernetes API. <coughs> uh, can you show this file, Vagrant.com? Just just. Actually, I'm using uh, here. I'm using a DB box, yeah. a media control bundle yeah, that yeah. already comes with Kubernetes configured. Yeah. There is no authentication, nothing. It's it's for developing. It's like for me, it's easier, way, easiest yeah. way how to start Kubernetes <coughs> in single mode. Sure. Uh, so, uh, there is also. Uh, before, when I show you interactive mode, um, there are some cases that you don't want to use interactive mode and you don't want to have uh, default values inside your Nuku specific, uh, inside Nuku file. So you can also do something else and that's uh, You can use mode and fetch, and what fetch does is it only extracts uh, Nuku metadata from the image. It doesn't do run. Mm -hmm. Destination, for example, varlib, atomic app, uh, my nginx. Oh. So. Now it reads the uh, atomic app image, gets all the metadata that are inside, and extracts it to this directory. And there's also the answers con sample is automatically generated. So you know all the parameters that are required to run this application. So you, you don't need any documentation or readme file as in Docker Hub, because you have all inside this new metadata and for your convenience, this is generated. So I will rename it. And so uh, I can edit it now. Uh, I will keep the host port, but I can change namespace for def defcon. I will also change provider. Let's say OpenShift. <coughs> and for OpenShift, I I was only to provide provide the config. And I have it here. So now in current directory I have all the local metadata with answers conf and answers can define all the parameters that, that is needs to run. So now I can do I can run this application and I can give it parameter uh, as, param as for parameter, I will give it to a path to my application. So I mean, current directory. And if we do this, yeah, uh, there's a lot of output, but it basically got deployed to OpenShift. Yeah, I can not find it here, but I can check OpenShift web page. Yeah. Open your project, and you can see that here's my service. It's working. <coughs> so I, I basically used all 
one image within local application with one definition to deploy to Docker, Kubernetes, and OpenShift. And I can do the same thing. Oh. I've also prepared Marathon. And Marathon is a little different provider. It uses, it directly uses um, Marathon's uh, REST API. So for it, I need to define provider API. HTTP 10, 1, 2, 4. I can do run again. And here my engineering is deployed. But then I'm using the same image, one image, and I can deploy to multiple providers. I can also, and I don't have to even edit answers com. I can do this from command line, and I can all write parameters from answers com from command line. So this is nice, but but this is like a really simple one container application. Uh, when Nuku is really useful, is for multi container application, as I said. And I prepared like a really simple example, or I have Flask web page, which is stupidly simple. But what it does, it connects to Redis and increments counter. So here I read the uh, information how to connect to Redis master and Redis slave. Uh, I basically increment counter, and if Redis slave is also defined. I get value of counter from slave. So I write to master read from slave. Uh, yeah. I have Docker file for this Python application. I already built it, so I will do it here. And what else I prepared is that I have here I have Hello Flask Atomic App. And this is it describes my uh, web page and in a graph I have two items one is my hello flask <coughs> application and here is another it's Redis and here you can see how you can re reuse another local application from this so I'm here using this source basically says use uh, get information from another local and docker says it's get it from docker image I will show you how molecule for this array looks like. It's this one. Uh, in graph, here we have also two items Redis master and Redis slave. But it, it doesn't reuse any other local application. Those are basically two containers that are defined here with artifacts for all providers. Um, you can also inherit things. So, because OpenShift is basically, uh, it's, OpenShift is, is built on Kubernetes, it uses the same API, <coughs> so you can use the same artifacts for, from Kubernetes for OpenShift, so you can inherit them. Yeah, and Redis Live, something, there are some parameters. Definition from Kubernetes, OpenShift, Docker, and Marathon. So this this is this is telling the automatic update it requires this other new local application. And if I so I will do first I will do fetch this application. Hello. I will do just edge. If I don't specify directory, by default it uses var lib atomic app. Name of the image and UID. So I will rename answers. And here you can see that atomic app generated answers come sample from all the molecules that, that uh, 
have been references referenced in this new echo. So I have uh, my whole Flask application and all its parameters here, but I have also Redis and Redis Slave uh, parameters here. So it's, it's, it's pluggable. It's quite easy to write a new one. And that could even be distributed separately. And uh, like how would someone like to take this on a gap and add, and add their own engine? Yep. So uh, I will keep default values here. I will keep Kubernetes and, um, and namespace like default, but I will write them from command line. I will use new uh, metadata from current directory. I will tell them that namespace should be devconf and provider should be OpenShift. And provider config command. Okay. Config. I don't have the uh, so now you can see a lot of outputs because basically two new local applications got deployed to OpenShift. If I go here, you can see that there is my uh, nginx that I deployed previously, but there is also Redis master service <coughs> or display replication controllers and that is my whole flask service uh, my uh, whole flask Nueku, currently doesn't include a definition of openshift route so I will create it here manually but you can also do it by and you can yeah it's still deploying and you can see that using only just one command I deploy basically three containers. And I can do the same thing. Again, I have only one definition of application. And I can do the same thing for, let's say, you know, I keep the phone and I will use Marathon. I'm not going to use Kubernetes because Kubernetes is really simple to open shift and it's not that, that interesting. But Marathon is different. I will use provider API again. <coughs> and because Marathon uses slightly dif different uh, service discovery mechanism, I also need to change some values here. So I will tell that Redis Slave should listen on port 6380. That Master host is at seven to seven. This so now I reconfigure my application so it can get deployed to Marathon. I will save it. And now I can run it without any parameters because all parameters I set in answers file. So I can do just this. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they are using the same port, so I have to delete these engines. <coughs> Now you can see that they are my free containers for my application. It should be working. Oh, yeah. Yeah, internet here is very so slow, so it's. They are not still started. Okay. Let's see if this works. Oh, again. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it takes very long to do Docker, Docker pool and run. So, and I, I have been able to deploy to two different, two real, uh, really different uh, orchestrators from 
one or two application using one container uh, with Atomic app. So basically, the, this was this is all I wanted to show you. So questions? Yeah. Is it possible to deploy one Atomic app to multiple providers? Why if I have the base? I want in one data center, but the top, I want in uh, other data center. Yeah, yeah. It, it's possible. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like all information about all information about your local application is stored in the generated uh, path here. So basically, if you run, uh, if you run Atomic App two times. Will always get into the different path, and you can you can use this path to manage your application from there. Can you show example in, in this config file? Is possible to configure multiple providers? Oh no, you, you will have to run twice, twice it. Like uh, ah. you have two diff two copies of the local metadata into directories, and run from there. Hey, I'll show you. So I will use the Nginx example. I will use fetch. Yes. Ah. Like I cannot do this uh, in one run. I will have to do two runs, basically. If I understand your question correctly. Specify Kubernetes uh, to Kubernetes, and you want to same use same provider or different? Like I have one app, the app is uh, web page and database, and I want to deploy the web, web application to the other. Oh, and I see. And get the database up to another yeah. yeah, you cannot do this right now because it's like, and why would you want to do this basically? Because if you have different providers, you have different service me service discovery mechanism, and like it gets really complicated. No, you can do this now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah so uh, I see a clear help in when from I ISV standpoint. Yep. But if I am not an ISV, I have one single environment of let's say Marathon or maybe Kubernetes. Then what are the advantages? would you offer in this scenario because I anyways would have to write Kubernetes config then why should I package it into a newly queued uh, atomic app and ship it on? Like, are there any advantages uh, would you, what would you parameters say? you can move them if you using only Kubernetes but maybe you have one Kubernetes cluster in, in production one in test or for okay. development mm -hmm. and you have probably different different settings you have different addresses and so on and with Molecule, you can easily parameterize, parameterize those things. Okay. So you, you don't have to edit uh, JSON again and again to deploy things here and there. So this is basically a useful thing. And yeah. Because if you, if you are not using Molecule, you will have to have some repository with all the JSON files, basically. Or, mm -hmm. And you will have to edit it, uh, basically, with every deployment edit and change the values, change the addresses of your databases and so on. With Molecule you have this templated basically. Uh, Alright. Yeah. So with this tool I deploy, but to check the status and stuff, then I have to go to the individual provider. Yeah. There is it's only for deploying. So it's like for upgrading. deploying and undeploying basically. Undeploying as well. Yeah, you can stop. Currently you can stop. 
there is some work in progress for also scaling that we will be able to scale applications on different providers and maybe in the future there will be also some monitoring and figuring out but <coughs> right now you cannot you cannot you cannot even list list all the applications that are running on Atomica using Atomica this will be also in future possible so there are any questions or if you want to sh so show you something else I can demo more <laughs> okay so because this is really uh, really early and not much people are using it and please check it out try it and tell us what we can do differently or what you don't like about our molecular atomic app basically everything we're still, still discussing and figuring out what to do next and how to do it. So please help us go to our, our mailing place or IRC channel. Check out check out our repositories. File issues if you if you have some with it. Yeah, still have one question. So until we get this uh, open shift for normal people from ahead, which is not going to happen for some time, then uh, can I use it against Google Cloud Engine like? <coughs> The computing platform. I mean, like, I'm trying to. I don't have a server, so I don't have a place to install Kubernetes or anything like that. So, against which environment can I use it and deploy my VLAN? Basically, uh, if ADB you against ADB, you can try it. Out. Yeah, you can right now. You can try it against ADB. Yeah. There's a, a level, an atomic developer bundle that is basically a Vegan box with either a Kubernetes single node or OpenShift single node. Or I mean, even I need to push it live. No. And if you want to push it live, like if you are not using right now Kubernetes, OpenShift, or Marathon, you can. But you can write other providers. There is also discussion about writing uh, nat native support for Amazon Web Services, so we will be able to use uh, OC for the, uh, Atomic App. For yeah, I was figured that there is one nice feature with OpenShift. Uh, I will clear my project. So in a recent version, we add support for uh, OC new app. You are a little bit familiar with uh, OpenShift. There is this nice command it's called OC new app. And it's a very smart command. If you give it, um, give it a container, it basically deploys the containers and creates uh, replication control services and so on automatically. But if you have at least Atomic App version 0 0.4, you can also use OC new app to deploy things. So I will again use my simple command, simple uh, Atomic App. And all I have to do is OC new app. OC is command line client for OpenShift. And I gave it based only. Uh, I gave it it uh, only my atomic app. Yeah. I will have to grant install rights. It's not working now, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, because it's not pulled, okay. So I won't show you here. But basically, what this does is it uh, you pass uh, OpenShift Atomic App Container. It uh, Inside Atomic App Container, there is like some detection that it's running on the OpenShift and automatically starts a uh, new local application on OpenShift. So you don't have to use uh, atomic command, nothing else, nothing. You just do AOC new app and it detects that it's inside the uh, OpenShift environment and it starts automatically containers on OpenShift. Okay. 
this is all for me. So please, if you have time, if you are interested in it, check it out and tell us what we can do differently. Should I put it to Fridays? So it doesn't care about how you distribute it. Yeah. You can just put it in YAMP, YAMP repo, you can put it in uh, Git repo or whatever else. Yeah. But if you are using Atomic App, it's always inside the container. So you basically distribute your, to your client, you distribute container. Oh, okay. Sorry, and inside that container, <coughs> there is a molecule directory with all the metadata, yeah. and definition, and also Atomic App. It knows how to And okay. in, in a single um, to data. Atomic App could have multiple uh, NoFuel um, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Basically, this is the way how we like right now to uh, basically doing it. But in future, maybe there was discussion to separate those things. Okay. So we don't. Okay. And, and I should. I should. I work in uh, Red Hat Relays Engineering. My, I'm Dennis, by the way. Dennis is working. Uh, hi, Dennis. So, um, yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Um, it's this <laughs> My job is always just about getting contact to customers. So yeah. that's uh, um, and so right now it's also good. yeah, it's all around uh, distributed images. Okay. And just we don't want to create uh, we don't want to create another another system, another repository right. for so this would be atomic the atomic app Docker images. So this should be the registry. Yeah. And we would and we would build those uh, those the same way we were putting out. Like right now, uh, the way how we do it is that if it's atomic up, you put dash atomic up to the name of the image. Okay. The same as usual. Because okay. like, we are pushing it on Docker Hub and then other registries. Mm -hmm. There is a mix of the both, the classic images and atomic up images. So basically putting dash atomic up. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, that helps. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Thank you. No. Uh, yeah. I'm having a conversation on having the AWS provider on GitHub. Sorry? Right. All right. Uh, so. so, let me just show. Yep. So, I was talking to Brad and he asked mm -hmm. me to right. initiate this yep. on AWS product. So, this is me. Welcome mm -hmm. you guys. Uh, so then I'm, I'm not even going to start. Yeah. We got time still. The so that should be earlier today. Uh, no, yeah. It shouldn't be too much. It's too slow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the, the virtual machine or? No, the, well, to copy it off the virtual machine. Uh, yeah. uh, to copy it off the USB. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just took like uh, 10 minutes. Oh, maybe easy. Yeah, in a line. I don't know if it was my machine. Or or just the, yes, the USB I mean, stick itself. Uh, these guys don't, don't know about. Uh, it, 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 the same thing actually happened in the workshop uh, no, next door. There is now. Uh, mm -hmm. They were trying yeah, to copy like, just uh, like 100 uh, megabytes yeah, off of it. But I, I, I don't think anyone was able yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have also given the API. Uh, it's all right. I have. So I really hope that. I, I it's okay. Uh, yeah. I can do uh, yeah, some I will talk with those guys. Stuff. I will yeah. explain them. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think that they don't get it. Like, <coughs> in any case, uh, I, I would be very happy to help whatever I can. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, this is good. This will be a very interesting use case because it's like you don't have to install any Kubernetes. Or yeah, you don't have to install anything. You want it for your local machine and push it in Yeah. You don't have the power for it, do you? There is an extra one. Okay. I, Only the number of device will set your keys. I have a power cord, but no it right. adapter. It will be even great for demos and so on. Yeah. You can yeah. show it. Yeah. Yeah. You should push it more. I'm doing that. Yeah. I will join the discussion. No, I, I yeah. know that there, there is no issue, but to be fair, I will try to do it. Yeah, so uh, actually Brian told me to get into this. Uh, uh, that's why I tagged him. There is, um, yeah, uh, Bjorn, Christopher, I think that he was the first who found this. Yeah, he yeah. was the first. Yeah, he's here on the second. Okay, so I met him. So I uh, you can either use VGA. Oh, yeah, you don't have like, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be mini DB. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's yeah, just. That, that's what I but let's, let's use VGA. Okay, Hi, Tomas. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, uh, how was it? Be brutal, I guess. <laughs> Seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, wait. Seven. She. Yeah. I mean, it, it eventually worked, but it was, it was pretty slow. Juju is the only way you can get Kubernetes right. And 
some scarves um, for people who ask questions interact or oh. feel free to give them out thanks a lot Team I'm on, um, we have like two, somewhere like that, engineers that work on all of the products that we had, except for the boss. Um, so, but right now, a group of six of us work on the uh -huh. okay. 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 But you basically move around. Yeah. 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 Whenever. We, we do whatever we need to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. a lot of us have multiple areas too, that's not a thing, you know what I mean? Are there any tools in like like in common that you could use with any other products or like Yeah. A lot of it is a lot of it is similar. Uh -huh. and not, you know, um, actually we do a whole summit presentation that's like all about our tools. Our, not just our tools, but our, what we do and the results and stuff that we have. And, um, there are one video on YouTube that you can, so yeah, but there's a lot in common. Uh -huh. you know, actually, something I'm going to go over today is um, of the, the, the process that we use, the, the approach. To yeah, yeah, the workflow thing. The yeah, workflow, exactly. Yeah. So some of that will touch on what tools we use. And I'll show you. I'll show the guys. Um, about time. I need to interpret the data. Cool, cool. <clears throat> we got more than half an hour. Right? Okay, I'm still well, the other room's still going because they're still copying stuff off the. Yeah. They, the kernel. The, room, right? yeah. kernel the kernel. Maybe this one. Yeah. In the other room, I guess no one was really able to make this USB sticks work. Well, compiling the kernel takes one hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. So, would you guys wait for the seven, or would you guys? Yeah. I I guess we could. I mean, we can always go somewhere and then start drinking, and then when you show up, you could. What time are you? Be done in ten minutes. Seven minutes stop, but the six is still seven. Ten minutes stop in there. Right. But there's seven last one. I don't know how much people are going to be Right. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. We can so, meet here at six and then decide. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, but like I said, I don't know where we just have to get walking distance. Or we going I only have one. Right. We can get a cab. I think we're gonna need to. So <coughs> we're gonna Although I think Freddy is gonna go with the satellite. Team right oh yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that'll be five, five, six. six. Okay. Yeah. What? What would you say? I'm going for the stock. Is it stock? Is it the chop for the stock? Oh. Cool. Can you, can you grab the charger from him? Oh, sure. Thanks. <laughs> the Penjo used to work for me, that guy. Oh, yeah. He left, he left recently to start 
So that happens for every uh, area that we need to investigate. You know? So, but the, but the part I'm speaking on, the part we struggle with is the Jenkins part because we we don't really have people that uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really not friendly. <laughs> and uh, as a project, OpenShift is using uh, Jenkins Job Builder, yeah. and so the, no one's bothered to really. Uh, it's like tribal knowledge. I guess. Yes. Yeah. So our team. We should improve our Jenkins skills. <coughs>
So the uh, the is like for not really specifically focusing on Bert in any way. Um, you know, we, we test on EC2. We also have a, a couple of racks of gear that runs OpenStack. Um, but we don't really reprovision the VMs. We just wipe OpenShift and reinstall it. You know, so it's not really a part of our that that part actually needs a lot of work for automation. Um, we need we need some more gear too because we're trying to get to a thousand uh, a thousand nodes, and it's very expensive to do that on Amazon. Yeah, and the bare metal we have can't we can't fit them all. They're all virtual. Well, we have so we have twenty, we have twenty three servers, and uh, if we do a thousand VMs on there, they're they're too slow. Well, I think we <laughs> we might have got it to work, but yeah, so, like each VM only has what did we give it? Five hundred megs of RAM, and it's just not enough. Yeah. You, you'll see in, in the slides, OpenShift uses, actually uses a lot of RAM, unfortunately. Live on YouTube right now? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Last time I checked, there was one viewer and it was me. So <laughs> you don't have to worry. <laughs>
thing. Which, which is the uh, YouTube channel you're using? Um, you go to youtube.com dash check. What's your GitHub? My name is Jeremy Eater. these repos? Yeah, the OpenShift performance one. Well, those are really just examples. I'm gonna, you're just sort of gonna bounce around.
Spectacularly fail because uh, Why? because the the <coughs> VM demos the VMs are going to be it's going to take by like half the time just to get the environments set up on your laptops. Can I help in some way? Um, I think even if we uh, <laughs> well the uh, yeah I can hack on shit. I'm a hacker. There's nothing I can help with. Just let me know. I think we're fine. I'm going to do some, some so I have a GitHub with all of the labs and resources in it. I'll do some live demos on EC2. And then, really, this this really should have been a slide presentation. I have no idea why it's a workshop. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. It makes you feel better. Yeah. They scheduled me for a workshop last year. I didn't even know, and then I realized, I have an hour and a half of this talk. So if it's a not shit talk, and you take an hour, hour 15, that's fine too, you know? Yeah. I was no, it's cool. It'll say work out. I have to leave before the end of the yeah. session, probably. Yeah. You see me walk out, so don't walk out. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, if you're fighting with something, you know, of course. Yeah, it should be alright. Alright, cool. No, I'm not fighting with something, I'm just testing. I'll let you get ready. Sure. 
is terrible. They're not bad. The, um, right, we could put it down. You can do that, yeah. Yeah? Uh, it's, yeah, that's fine. Uh, People might have luck with it, who knows. No, I stayed for the For these workshops, there's the beginning here. The, if you choose. You want to check? Say what? If you want to check, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I leave you one, two things and you get it after it. Thank you.
Wire connection is so much better. Yeah. Thank you. I couldn't even load this webpage. I couldn't load this one. Yeah, why? Wow.